Once upon a time, games looked like strokes. But fortunately, graphics would actually come out in 1984, known as NES, and people were finally allowed to enjoy video games at home for the first time. The first time. But when Mario 2 came out, well, that game had gooder graphics. The era of despair ended with the era of, alright, this is good enough, starting soon after. And as time went on, Nintendo became the top dog. And then they got a real dog, a beagle in fact, to start forcing third parties to stay on their platforms. They had competitors, but most of them were either too insane to actually compete or they were still figuring out what video game is. But there was one who actually stood a chance in the gaming market, Sega. Sega wanted to compete with Nintendo, but like Nintendo, they needed a mascot. And if not a mascot, they at least needed a killer app. Games like Altered Beast and Golden Axe were good, and they helped steer people to the console, but they needed someone the brand could stand firm with. However, their first try at a mascot was so relevant that I don't even remember what I was even just talking about. Right, right, mascots. Naoto Oshima and Yuji Naka. You might know them from the hit game Balan Wonder. They were both working at Sega at this time, and they had worked together on Fantasy Star. Together, these two helped define what Sonic the Hedgehog would be. Naka provided the programming, giving the game its momentum, moving along curves, slopes, and slopes. He was pretty much crucial for the game's distinct feeling in a sea of platformers. He was crucial for a lot of other things too, if you catch my piss, but we'll get to that another day. Mishima was the one responsible for initiating a sexual awakening in millions of people around the world, providing Sonic's design. Combine both of them? Well, the end result is the reason I can't sleep at night. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, the OG. My personal history with Sonic as a franchise goes all the way back to the mid-2000s. Getting a PS2 and Sonic Heroes as a kid, this was the first time I ever saw games in 3D, along with the Wrath of Cortex and LEGO Star Wars among a few others. Everyone who loves games as an adult has had that one moment where something in a game blew them away and for me, Sonic was that guy twice. The second time is when I saw the HD version of Sonic Unleashed playing on my very own TV. Me. My TV. It was insanity. And to think, I really assumed that Beauty and the Beast on SNES was the peak of how games were supposed to look like. You're telling me there's a world beyond white noise. Get the f*** out. I'm never turning this magical rectangle off. But back to what's relevant here. Games become C now and lots of older games have actually fallen out of favour, either because of changing tastes or hardware differences. I wanted to see what Sonic 1 was like nowadays. I wanted to find out, would I still even like it? While generally most Sonic fans that I've seen had experienced the Genesis games first, I, I only found them because they were flash games on a shady site. Even then I had no clue they were, well, real. Although I do have a clue how much STDs those sites must have given my PC. But hey, the AIDS was worth it, I had tons of fun with those games. But how does Sonic 1 hold up today, after over 30 years? This is a car ridge, but it's a good coaster too. However, if you look carefully, you'll see Sonic. Put this into your console, specifically a Sega. Or if you're me, don't even own the console in the first place, but buy a game for it anyway. If only I could buy self-control. If only I had an alternate way to play this game, somehow through other means. Truly, it would be amazing. Oh wait! You know, on one hand, I think it's great that Sega wants to make these classic tiles readily available to people like me who are too scared of wires from the 14th century. But on the other hand, those sneaky bastards have gone over two decades without re-releasing Sonic Schoolhouse. It's alright, just if you just, just grab any object in the vicinity, it probably has a Sonic paw on it. And it did. So true. Green Hill Zone, I wonder what the first level could look like. The name Green Hill could mean anything. Oh, this is Christopher Nolan deep. What a place to start. Green Hill is still great. Start off jogging and you'll end up boosting like a maniac. Roll into a ball at fast speeds to watch him take off. Hop up and off of platforms and you'll maintain your momentum. The idea of a platform meeting speed wasn't exactly new. Remember that this game did take after the first game with graphics, which let you skedaddle with a run button. Yuji Naka himself had never seen someone run before and decided to show the world what he had seen here. 
but in this manner, it was incredibly different at the time. Speed has become something that's intertwined and associated with the franchise, as this gameplay was wholly unique and a huge breath of fresh air from all of the Super Mario imposters crowding the scene. These levels are still such a blast. Not that blast, please, not that. And serve as a great introduction to how the game feels and what you should expect next, not just from the game, from the franchise. And look at that, weathering and erosion have catastrophic effects on Sonic's world. Name old Mario wouldn't even be cool enough for global warming. I suppose it's also worth mentioning that, for many people nowadays, Green Hill Zone is a level that has become stale and numb over the years, but the magic's just not really being there anymore. Either because of the admittedly constant reappearances or because of the remix of the stage aesthetic. It's just kind of comforting to be greeted by a stage I recognise, and that still rings true for the first Green Hill. Of many. How do you play? Well, controlling Sonic just asks you to know how to move on a D-pad and press one button, which obviously is really simple. What this means is that anyone could get into this game that didn't make the actual game a bar because moving Sonic was more than sliding him around. He has momentum and going anywhere in the level required you to make use of this momentum. I'm not some expert on game design, all I know is this immediately made Sonic stand out. You don't have to worry about not knowing how to use some random ability, just roll, sprint, do it all with just this. It's not like they didn't have other buttons on the Genesis, they just chose not to use those. And that simplicity of classic Sonic, I just love. Something else that was different about Sonic back then was how it approached punishment, and how it beat your resolve into a pulp compared to other games. In a typical game, there used to be something there to curb your enjoyment and ruin your day, which is why enemies exist, or stage hazards. Most of the time it's just a health bar, uh, you die once, you're out. In Mega Man, you get hit, you lose a few months of your life, but no biggie. In Mario, when you're fully powered up and get hit, you become undateable. Get hit in Sonic, he'll crash the f***ing stock market. As long as you have one ring, you're good to keep going, and these are always spread throughout the stage. Meaning you want scrounging around looking for more rings, you want farming enemies to make sure you can survive two hits instead of one. You just keep going forward and hope you can find some more rings to stop yourself from dying. It's creative, and it helps complement the game's design. Speaking of rings, every level gives you the opportunity to access the local crack den. Let's talk about these special stages and go into excruciating detail about them. Amazing, 100% Irish tea. Let's get on to the main business here, special stages. Ha! Can't read. <laughs> And as the natural order in the world of nature goes, grass, molten fucking magma. Now, this little zone is where all the bad people got weirded out because Marble Zone was too hard for these babies. <laughs> I was one of those weak babies. It is such a drastic change to what was going on a minute ago. Gone are the upper and lower pathways you could explore, you only have one way forward and then once forward crushes down. Enemies are maliciously placed right at the end of a corridor. Bats are hanging around in weird places. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know how I feel about taking the giant death chandelier to get to the next floor. I get the feeling stairs would be a less dangerous way of ascending in this situation. You just couldn't let me be right about one thing. Also, Sonic's stubby legs should melt off. He's standing next to lava. But, in terms of level design, this is a complete contrast to what made Green Hill so good and so fun. Subjectively, Donkey Brain to completely walk around in your own concept is what I would say if I was Donkey Brained. I think some people who dislike this old so much don't realize that different it isn't exactly bad. Is this still definitely slower than Green Hill? Sure, it requires more patience and map knowledge than just speeding through. But that doesn't mean it's a bad zone, or that it's necessarily a turnaround in what Sonic is. Sonic doesn't need to be fast to be good, and this is a good example of that. Now, to me, this level design is actually pretty solid and concise. It keeps me on my toes, always a wary feeling of not knowing exactly what's up ahead, but the area is always changing. 
Traversing across lava on a small piece of marble zone can be slow, but if you're fine with taking a hit, you can get through this instantly. Way more than before, your own skill isn't necessary here, and the zone totally lets you take advantage of that by still giving you the freedom to make jumps and get through it quicker, as long as you time it right, or choosing to stay on the blocks if you don't think you can do it. These hazards all have decisive patterns that aren't too overwhelming to avoid if you keep track of it, and can pay attention to how it all moves, and you know what, the feeling of pulling it all off is great. I love that Marble Zone always engages you with fairly different set pieces and seconds, you're never just going through the motions and walking through yet another area. The game changes the objective constantly without screwing up the flow too much, it's consistently the same speed all throughout. It's still not perfect, don't get me wrong, whoever put this here probably hits children. But to be fair, this was the first Sonic game, this is the second zone even. They didn't fully know what they should be doing at this point, it's a tough excuse to be making 26 years down the line, but it's forgivable to have missteps. As long as it's fun, I don't really care. Missteps that result in accidentally firing 300 employees, well, we like to call that an ouchie in the industry. I don't know what they were thinking putting this in the second zone of the game. This is much more difficult than Green Hill Zone, and I really think that a better second zone would have either been Starlight or Springyard. Speaking of which... After wading through Australian suburbs, you end up in Springyard Zone. Some would say, oh, Springyard, what a relief. You know what? Australia wasn't that bad. Wait, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, Spring Lord. Anyway, speed is one present here, you go... You, you, you go... Speed is more present here, you go bounce, bounce, and slide, slide a bit more. These little areas where you can go to a ball and just sling yourself is always fun. Did you guys know that spikes were beloved in old games? Although it is very hard to tell. I just hate these cereal balls. I don't know what it is, rotating objects just rile me up. Can you really blame me? Just look at these smug bastards. Look! Now it is my fault for getting screwed in these, I can't really blame the game. It's just obnoxious, that's all. Springyard is somewhat of a crossroads between Marble Zone and Green Hill. It has a bitch ton of hazards that are kind of harder to fight, but while well, you do have the illusion of choice this time, it's a mixed bag of pretty decent level design, and why would you do this to children? I just can't help but feel as if it's a bit too jammed together. You know what? I used to actually dislike Springyard. Now I just don't really like Act 3 because it's kind of bathwater. Seriously, this act once skip blows my mind because I never knew it was here. I really and truly thought this level was just a line. <laughs> Look at that, a Sonic fan like me didn't even know you could bypass some of this. And hell, Act 2 even gives you a top and low path. I do wish the levels branched together more, and to be honest, both of these paths are kind of pissed to navigate. Not literally, yet. But this is still fun platforming, and you generally have more places to build speed compared to marble. It's just that you have to work for it. Also, this? Oh, uh, uh, hang on. Anyway, I just can't help but- <laughs> But by Act 3, the repeated hazards and sections are so obviously copied and pasted over that it gets old. And while I think it's most apparent in Spring out of the whole game, does this just feels like even more of a chore to get through this zone. Yes, a chore. Cleaning time in my house was f***ing terrifying. Which, again, does not make Sonic 1 bad, it just makes it harder to go back to compared to with the Sonic games. Speaking of pathways, there is this one area that- D does nothing. What kind of psychopath would do that? It looks like I'll have to do some hacking. Hello. Uh, who? What? What? Who, who is that? Oh god. You know what? I did not march to my Sega Gen drive to be cyberbullied by fucking this. Is it to encourage me? Was it supposed to say Seath next to it? Do they want to shake me to my core or make me turn the game off? Well, I for one will not be shaken. Hoping is for the week, and my mummy told me that I am an alpha male. A stupid video game for children is no match for me. Anyway. I wonder why it's called Springyard. So oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Springyard. I get it. That's real that's funny. Yeah, it's spring. Lots of springs. I, I get it. I get it. That's it, I'm suing the architect of this establishment. <coughs> I'm not dealing with that. At the end of it all, it's an alright zone because the game controls so well anyway. I feel like you've seen all this zone has to offer by the end of Act 1, which reminds me... Three acts? Really? Three is too much. One man and a baby. I can believe that. 
two men and a baby. It's not out of the ordinary. Three men and a baby. No, 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 that would never happen. That's bullshit. I am not a fool because three is too much. And you've also probably noticed I haven't mentioned uh, the animals you free at the end of each zone. Yeah, I'd like to keep it that way. All right, what's next? No, 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 f you, no. That is a side mission. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't need the true ending. I'll just, I'll just skip it. <laughs> Wait, no, no, f I don't, I don't, I don't remember the code. I don't, I don't remember the What do I even begin? Okay, maybe it's my fault that I got mixed up between this and the one with David Bowie. Maybe they should have had a big red sticker that says Bowie not included. Compromise, we are both at fault. But I know for a fact I was not warned about this. Pneumonia. <clears throat> Third of all, uh, I, mean, I, I don't actually have a third point, just, just pretend I do. Labyrinth Zone is poopy. I would even go so far as to say the biggest poop of all, as well as being the worst zone of the game. It is the prime reason I actively do not try to replay the game often. Green Hill Zone, great. Marble Zone, less great, but still good. Spring Yard, less okay, but still okay. And then you get to Labyrinth Zone, turn the game off, and sob, howl, blubber even. You guys ever drowned before? Would you like to try? Thing is, in future Sonic games, there would be more levels that would justify this oxygen meter, but in those games, you either had the spin dash or something else to propel you through the water and make that risk of drowning actually add to the gameplay. And then you look at this, which is painfully slow, literally painfully slow. So it does nothing but suck. I can't even get across an empty path without expecting Homeland Security to blow me up. Unlike the other zones where you can be quick, it's just difficult. You have to walk through this on the way they designed it. Wading through water at two centimeters an hour. Let's put the Atlantic Ocean aside for a minute and try to look at it just on its own, not considering the game is about momentum. The level design that is here is just the most boring shit to have to play. Wing, wing, Ikea, wing, wing, cock and ball dodger, wing, wing. Let's play a little quiz. What does everyone think is up ahead? Is it A? Hedgehog Poontang, B, Prince Philip, or C, the little rat gets what he deserves. Oh, would you look at that? It's the French word for bread. <laughs> I hate this shit. Even playing this with the spin dash in a different version doesn't make it fun, it just makes it bearable. Because having fun in Labyrinth Zone means just chilling and getting spiked. It means stop locking you for not knowing you should be hopping on sponges. It means this. What? Is this? Was Hitler on the development team? It's cheap shot after cheap shot. I don't forget the Pacific Ocean is weighing you down. But to think, there are some people who don't believe in global warming. Wake up, sheep. This is what happens when you charge a rifle for too long. I hope the extra five minutes on Angry Birds was worth it. And if I don't see very soon, I'm gonna lose it, man. I swear. Say what you want about models on the spring yard, but at least those levels don't actively force you to go slow all of the time. Because if you're good enough, you can go fast. That just isn't here, even with that badly placed skip. And when the sun isn't trying its best to make you sh** yourself in anger, it offers you the most boring, bland platforming. It doesn't add to the game, and besides the fact that Labyrinth adds variety by being a water level, it doesn't do the game any favours being designed like this. I don't even like water levels, but usually they aren't this bad. And noticeably makes it that much worse than the entire rest of the game. But what's important is that this just isn't fun, no matter how I try to look at it. I know some people like Labyrinth and by some, I mean liars, but it just doesn't really belong in this game. It's such a shame they wasted this really, really cool aesthetic on such an ugh zone. And Sonic 1's graphics still look good to this day with a style that's unique to the franchise. In an era where most of the time games emulate how others looked, or they had the the appeal of a pile of dust. Sonic 1 was sexy dust on a whole other level. I could eat this lava, it looks that good. Labyrinth Zone is no exception, every zone has something unique about it. Bright crystals littered about every area, these cool designs on the yellow bricks. I'd even say it's the best looking zone in the game, also on the green hill. Sure, it's ruined by the fact that it's an unfun piss pool, but it's nice to look at. What can I say, I consider myself to be someone who pisses. Maybe I'm a bit biased. Well, at the very least, I won't ever have to put my eyes on that piece of shit level again. <laughs> Am I right? No more Labyrinth Zone. What reason would they have to repeat it? What reason? 
Sega would never betray me like that. They are known for being not sneaky and having every moral. After finishing, you get sent into Starlight, which is pretty much Green Hill 2. I have no complaints, honestly. This song is just nice. Wouldn't it be great if the whole game was like this? Shout out to the uh, Olympics for featuring this in the uh, Tokyo 28, I mean, 19, 20, I mean, tw no wait, 2020, Olympic, tw I mean, 2021 uh, sports game. I really like hearing that song though. Please don't sue me for mentioning your name. Man, I sure am having fun in Nightline Zone. These levels are so quick. Huh? But I, I blinked once. I'm, I'm done. What? No, no, take me back. Take me back. Take me back. We're scrapping what? Sapin is the final area of the game, and what's your task? Home invasion. Robotnik Eggman has it coming at this point. Let's go fuck him up. <laughs> for the damn road when a pitfall. Electric fences, fire pipes, BDSM car pillars. I, 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 I know a guy who said there's a dog in one of these rooms. I still haven't found it, but seriously, though, these fuckers are everywhere. They completely invade the tight platforming segments you've come to expect. And by tight, I do mean. <sighs> okay, 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 alright, cool, cool. Cool. At this point, you form multiple diseases and learn exactly how to control Sonic, how to bend the physics in your direction, learning how to look for secrets. Scrap Brain is a final test to everything you know about the game, everything that you've been taught for the past 5 zones and 15 levels. Being the last zone, I'm fine with the spike in difficulty as long as it's enjoyable. And it's still alright, albeit cheap, but that's to be expected at this point. What you shouldn't expect is speed. What kind of an idiot expects speed from a Sonic game? Oh, Nelson Mandela. Sonic games don't usually have Nelson Mandela. Y usually. The music is so cool, it's kind of creepy and puts you on edge with that pretty tone. Almost mechanical in a way, much like this whole set of levels themselves. And... Oh, oh hang on, someone's on my door. Turns out my doll was personless. Being that they have a good reason to embody pure evil, a lot of this slang shit I can't understand. Apart from this, I, I will complain about this. I, I hate this. But it's cool, uh, this really is an unabashed f you from them to us, bring together every single element, and almost every obnoxious hazard to screw us over in every way. You've got fire, earth, to, 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 to toaster, Go gummy bear. But is it good? I actually don't hate it, but that's coming from someone who lives and breeds as a blue prick, you know? I'm used to his bullshit by now. With unfair level design, you cannot predict. Even if you're trying to predict it, most of this just feels uncomfortable to navigate. Trying to be fast. And that's really not something I would say for most levels in the game. The big f you can crushing you to death if you're too slow, or, or if you try and rush it. There's just no reason to ever take this path, it's a punishment for what? Oh, launching yourself out of the wrong path. And after you realise that, you know, that area is awful, it becomes a waste of level design and effort. There's just too many of these show-stopping moments to really have momentum. As much as that does happen throughout the whole game, those stages went overflowing with level design like that. I do appreciate that the level goes all in on being an annoying bitch instead of teetering on it, like Spring Yard. And it definitely makes for an interesting level to replay, very much because Act 1 and 2 are completely different to each other in design. Which is actually a problem I had with most other zones because, you know, it felt the same with each level. And to be fair, even though this shit does get annoying, there's redeeming factors here and there that make these final few levels at least somewhat enjoyable. Again, when you, when you look at this as just a platformer. Well, at least it's not Labyrinth, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> Getting through, <sighs> we're left with the ultimate showdown, the final, final battle. battle. But if you scroll nine gag like I do, you will quickly realize that this whole encounter is a sole metaphor for how just like Sonic, we're all rats in a cage running from the egg in the ceiling. It really is quite profound and when I originally played this as a child, I, I must say this boss fight moved me to tears. The color grey representing the feeling you get when you've left the house and realized I left my 
my Kandora Mini Waffle Maker Machine for individual waffles Panini's hash browns on. The electricity killing you if you don't dodge the egg truly relates to how we are the eggs and life is the whisk. Because just like an egg, we all have shells. Eggs can also be fried. This truly was Christopher Nolan Deep. That was the first Sonic the Hedgehog. Wait, 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 no, no. Just like my real life boss. Hit him at times, he blows up. I'm, I'm not welcome at my last workplace. These contraptions from Baldy McNall's hair are all buried from each other. Sure, the method of defeating him boils <laughs> down to just hitting him enough, but changing the way he moves and attacks keeps the game from getting too stale. Instead of making the bosses a bullet sponge of the same fight in different ways, they put genuine thought into these attack patterns, Sonic's limitations, and what would surround these patterns. As well as that, these fights are all straight up unique to each other, which is great as it helps highlight each fight to the zone it's attached. All in all, I actually love it, and I'd say the bosses apart from this ungodly demon shit are my favourite parts of the whole game, next to the music. Oh, and the music obviously is great, I think it goes without saying that Sonic games are all filled with catchy soundtracks, but this and too having a soundtrack made by a person who led an actual band. There's a reason everyone could still hum Green Hill, it's a classic. But if I ask someone to do the classic Bubsy 3D theme, suddenly I'm breaking and entering. Anyway, that was the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. Who doesn't love this game, am I right? I know who you love it. Your parents love it. Shady guy who sells hacked Pokemon on eBay loves it. Everyone loves this shit. But you know what? How dare people not nitpick the game for half an hour? Sonic 1 is not among the best in the franchise, but it provided the building blocks for all Sonic games, which is very important. It's safe to say the original mission succeeded, Sonic has carried Sega for years, and this first Sonic game? It sold over 40 million copies by 2022. That's insane. I really do like the game a lot, and considering how many first tries are, well, poo poo pee pee, the first Sonic game has aged pretty damn well, mostly. What I don't like is that it's very much overshadowed other and better games simply for being the one with Green Hill, and probably being the only Sonic game that some people know, kind of like Gen 1 Pokemon. That's a crime. Better and more depthful Sonic games have been ignored because they're not Genesis games, or because in the third dimension every Sonic game reviewer's biggest enemy. If there's anything I've learned today, it's that Sonic 1 is a roller coaster the whole way through. There's ups, there's downs, I puked 17 times while I was playing it, but you know what? Any true Sonic fan should expect that from this franchise by now, and that's why I love it so much. Well, if you can excuse me, I have some business to attend to.